Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, Lord God, to refrain from judgments about the sins of others, that like your servant Marina the monk, we may hold fast to the path of discipleship in the midst of unjust judgments. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Susanna. Then the two elders stood up before the people and laid their hands on her head. Through her tears she looked up toward heaven, for her heart trusted in the Lord. The elders said, while we were walking in the garden alone, this woman came into with two maids, shut the garden doors, and dismissed the maids. Then a young man who was hiding there came to her and lay with her. We were in a corner of a garden, and when we saw this wickedness, we ran to them. Although we saw them embracing, we could not hold the man, because he was stronger than we, and he opened the doors and got away. We did, however, seize this woman and asked her who the young man was, but she would not tell us. These things we testify. Because they were elders of the people and judges, the assembly believed them and condemned her to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O oh, eternal God, you know what is secret and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that these men have given false evidence against me, and now I am to die, though I have done none of the wicked things that they have charged against me. The Lord heard her cry. Just as she was being led off to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young lad named Daniel, and he shouted with a loud voice, I want no part in shedding this woman's blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 148. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord, the Lord, from, the Lord, the Lord heavens. from the heavens. Praise, Praise him, him in, in the heights. heights. Praise, Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise, Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise, Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise, Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters, waters above the heavens. heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he, for he commanded and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. A certain ruler asked Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. He replied, I have kept all these since my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, there is still one thing lacking. Sell all that you own and distribute the money to the poor, and you have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. But when he heard this, he became sad, for he was very rich. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard it said, then who shall be saved? He replied, what is impossible for mortals is possible for God. Then Peter said, look, we have left our homes and followed you. And he said to them, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who will not get back very much more in his age and in the age to come eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today in our calendar, we remember and celebrate the life and witness of Marina the monk. She's not a saint I was well acquainted with, but I found her story particularly moving, and I thought I would share it with you in full today. I think after you hear it, uh, you'll, you'll agree with me, my assessment of Marina. This is from Lesser Feasts and Fasts. Marina was born in present-day Lebanon in the 5th century. She was the only child of her parents, and her mother died when she was still a young girl. Her father refused to remarry, and instead raised her himself until she was a teenager. At that point, he hoped to find her a husband and then retire to live the life of a monk. Marina, however, rejected this plan and said, why would you save your own soul at the cost of destroying mine? Instead. She shaved off her hair and exchanged her clothing for men's clothing. When her father saw her determination, he relented. Selling all of their possessions, they went together to the monastic settlement in the Kadisha Valley, where he introduced her as his son, uh, giving him her the name of Marinos. After 10 years of living the monastic life together, the father died. Now Marinos, continued to live at the monastery without revealing his identity to anyone. In time, however, a local girl who had become pregnant outside of marriage accused Marinos of fathering her child. Rather than respond to this accusation with the obvious denial, Marinos accepted responsibility rather than revealing his secret or subjecting the girl to further reproach. When the child was born, the infant was given to Marinos to raise at the monastery and he accepted the boy as though he were truly his own son and bore patiently all of the scorn and abuse and rejection that the other monks heaped upon him for his supposed violation of his monastic vows. After many years, Marinos also died, and it was only when the monks went to prepare the body of the monk for burial that they discovered it was actually the body of a woman who had obviously been innocent of the charges of fathering a child. The monks and villagers lamented their false accusation and judgment, and after their repentance, many miracles were performed at Marina's tomb. Now, while some aspects of this story may be legendary, there are numerous accounts in early Christianity of women disguising themselves as men and entering male monasteries. And this is one of the examples that is considered to be perhaps the most historically reliable in some form. 
Marina Marinos is particularly ver venerated today in Lebanon, Cyprus, and Italy, usually under the name of Marina the Monk. What a tale. <laughs> As the hagiography notes, many elements of Marina's story are found in the story of other women who lived as male monks in the early church, almost as an archetype. Marina's willingness to accept blame and responsibility for a child which was not hers, and to silently shield someone who had falsely accused her, stands as unique in my mind when I hear this story. What strikes me most about Marina's story is her desire to care for others and to glorify God at crisis points in her life. She remains with her widower father to look after him after her mother's death, and she protects the secret of a young, scared mother, instructed by the Roman soldier who fathered her child to lie about Marina or Marinos and her child, even at extensive cost to herself. While Marina Marino sets an exceptionally high bar for us to meet. What I appreciate from this story is that it was when things were the most difficult for Marina that her faith and its impact were most evident. Her faith produced grace and self-sacrificial compassion in the midst of crisis. Seeing her example, I pray that the same might be said for us. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thine, O Lord, is the kingdom and the power and the glory, and thou art exalted as head over all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the obedience of your saints, you have given us an example of righteousness and in their eternal joy, a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.